2015 was the most important year of my life as Jay decided to try something new in my life that year the hardest I ever worked in my life I would work 15 hours a day or longer 9 years about the power of determination works good and hard work by Mark Mohan special to the Oregonian there's something almost jaded and decadent about the reaction I had to Avengers Age of Ultron Thousands of cast and crew members labored for months in corporations spent hundreds of millions of dollars to create a two and a half hour piece of relentless entertainment. And it as I sat slavishly and needlessly through the entire end credit roll, it was hard to muster anything more fervent than yeah, it was pretty good. Even a clean white hate would have somehow been more satisfying. But pretty good hits hit on the nose. Director Joss Whedon follows up his billion dollar superhero smash the way most sequel makers try to up their game. By amping up everything everybody like the first time around, plus more. 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 Overstuffed is the term for these sorts of fan-servicing efforts, and it's to Webbins' credit that Age of Ultron holds together as well as it does. Shrimit reminds Precky on Sal. I have never expected the love I have been receiving for the show Shrimit reminds Precky on Sal. I have never expected the love I have been receiving for the show things kick off somewhat worryingly, as we join Earth's mightiest heroes mid-battle, after the fashion of a James Bond flick. Captain America, Chris Evans, Thor, Chris Hemsworth, Iron Man, Robert Downey Jr., The Hulk, Mark, Ruffalo, Black Widow, Scarlett Johansson, and Hawkeye, Jeremy Renner, assault the European castle headquarters of Baron Strucker, Thomas Crestman, the last holdout of the villainous organization Hydra. The complex action choreography, including a lengthy opening shot following each hero in turn, is as much cartoon as live action film. Strucker's allies include two big additions to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Enhanced twins Pietro, Aaron Taylor Johnson, and Wanda Maximoff, Elizabeth Olsen. He's a super speedster. She has vaguely defined mental powers, and, unlike in the comics, they're not mutants. For legal reasons, of course. Welcome to Hollywood. Once the Baron is captured, the Avengers get what they came for, the powerful alien scepter wielded by Loki in the first Avengers film. Half of all superhero storylines revolve around geniuses making incredibly dumb decisions, and Age of Ultron is no exception. Using the power of a gem, and, Marvel fans, you know what kind of gem I'm talking about, found in the scepter, Tony Stark decides to create an artificial intelligence. He lets his digital man Friday, Jarvis, supervise the process, and then heads off to the Red Bulls celebrating the team's success. Because what could go wrong? It's almost a shame when the genocidal, robotic result crashes the party, because the scenes of our heroes kicking back are the best parts of the film. The Black Widow, whom everyone insists on calling Nat, has kind of a thing for Bruce Banner, at least when he's not a giant green rage monster. There's a charming moment, when the other Avengers try to lift Thor's hammer, which pays off very nicely later in the movie. And then Ultron shows up, and, as soon as you hear his James Spader voice, you know he doesn't mean well. Never trust anyone whose stated goal is peace in our time. Stark utters those words, Ultron overhears and decides, logically, that the best way to ensure the end of global conflict is to eliminate all these pesky humans, starting with the Avengers. There are no strings on me, he says, quoting from Disney's 1940 classic cartoon Pinocchio and one of the strangest recent instances of corporate synergy. So, the pattern plays out, big battle, breath-catching scene, bigger battle, character moment, and so on. It's as if someone spent a fortune to create the cinematic equivalent of a pixie song. There's a Pacific interlude at a farmhouse that adds some backstory to the generally underwritten character of Hawkeye. There's the creation of another artificial life form, The Vision, Paul Bagney, who steals the show from his flesh and blood co-stars. The Vision is weird enough to be a refreshing change from these overly familiar heroes, and he looks mighty cool. Where Age of Ultron gets bogged down is when it tries to serve the needs of the broader Marvel film franchise as the expense of lean, effective storytelling. Supporting players from the other films and TV series popped up. The Falcon, Anthony Mackie, War Machine, Don Cheadle, Heimdale, Atreus Elba, Maria Hill, Cody Smulders, and Agent Peggy Carter, Daily Act Will, as the effort to create a shared universe, similar to the comic books continues unabated. Whether this accumulation of details and references will draw in more fans or ultimately alienate audiences remains to be seen. There are big action sequences set on four continents, as the movie's narrative reach mirrors its global marketing reach. Ultron has already conquered a number of foreign territories, where it was released last week to the tune of $200 million in box office receipts. The expectations are that it will equal or exceed that number in the U.S. this weekend, likely becoming the biggest opening movie of all time. With its sort of firepower, resistance may be futile.
The best course might be to take a deep breath, buy a ticket, and kneel before our new robot overlords. Avengers, Age of Ultron grade, B rating, PG, minus 13, running time, 140 minutes cast and crew, Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, Chris Hemsworth, Jeremy Renner, Scarlett Johansson, James Bader, Paul Bagney, Aaron Taylor-Johnson, Elizabeth Olsen, and more, directed by Joss Whedon. The Lowdown in this predictably overstuffed but still enjoyable sequel, Earth's mightiest heroes go up against Ultron, a genocidal robot accidentally created by one of their own. The quieter moments are more effective than the massive robot army battles, a new character the Vision nearly steals the show.